Hello guys, so as I said before, like I am going to post every Friday a video on Rhino Grass Reporters, which comes in a parametric series software series. So in this video, uh, I'm just going to say you the brief uh, definitions which you need to remember when you modeling in Rhino. So in the previous video, I just gave an intro of the series and some basic uh, pressure. So let's recollect what we said, what I said before. So uh, this is the command prompt, which is a great teacher of ours, like which is going to teach every command and we are going to learn it from the command prompt. All the command, if you have any doubts, you need to wait it properly so that you can use any command by yourself. That is the best uh, point you need to note it. Like read the command prompt properly for one or two times when, when you use a command. Okay. So now uh, let's go in. Uh, okay. So the base part okay you can see this is like a tabs which gives you an access for your different viewports which i said before the shortcut everything in the previous video if you want to know the shortcut go to the previous video to learn about the viewports okay i'll just give the link to it here so on the base you have this option for grid snap auto planar or snap smart track number okay so grid snap i just uh, say about Chris snap auto snap and gumball in this uh in this video other options i'll say while modeling different things okay at that time if i say it will be helpful for you so stay tuned and, and watch all the video so the grid snap so grid snap is like you can see uh, grids over here so i'm just taking a polynomial or something so you can see it's not like I uh, just turn off all the fun. You can see, I just click, click the one. You can see all the points which I created, clicked randomly, it's been properly clicked on the grid intersection or the grid point. So that is said to be grid snap. If I off it and just do it, right. you can see it's not a it's the line is here, but it it's been clicked uh, around it so it's up to you if you want you can turn it on but uh, usually i don't use it but i just want the randomization which, uh, because like uh, the grid flow is like and you can change the grid uh, value go to the settings and you can change the count you can change the count a uh, distance between the my minor, minor grid spacing so uh, you can customize everything so next is auto auto is a command which makes you to access only to 90 degrees like you can see 90 or the fixed degrees like you can give 35 so it allows you to work in only the multiples of 35 maybe 35 then 70 then uh, 105 some kind of multiples it's like up to you and in osnap if i give right click and give go into the settings you have the option of degrees usually by default it has been 90 but it's up to you you can customize according to yourself so if you customize and you don't know you just go to reset default so reset default gives you all the options whenever you work in the settings there will be always a reset restore default so it's up to it's kind of a reset button so it will be useful and next one is osnap so osnap when i uh, when i click osnap uh, you can see there's a lot of options popping out here so i just draw a line okay So this is a line. So uh, you can see uh, when I try to draw another line. So you, when I click on this, you can see the near is being. It shows a label called near. So and if I turn on the end, you can show this. It shows a label called end. So if I turn off the end near and uh, maybe not, you can see it doesn't show any label. So it doesn't ping me. It it, it it's kind of when you turn on this kind of things it, it guides me that if I go my if I move my cursor over here it automatically clicks on the end so it will be perfect that the line is joined but if I turn off and if I draw it I it looks like I am drawing a line on the point but if I go and I will close the loop the line is not proper so that's why I always turn on those now so here yeah, the osnap option is a little bit less compared to cad because in cad you have around 15 uh, osnap command that is too much because i used to turn off certain things but here is like it's generally what we need so i just turn on everything 
and the next is gumball so when i select this you can see a tricolor thing i mean a tricolor object appears that is said to be gumball if you want you can turn it on turn it off so gumball is a very useful tool and you can see now this tricolor stuff and all the uh, uh, 3d options so so the gumball uh, helps you to do a lot of stuff so before uh, going into the gumball you just see i'm just uh, using the mouse to zoom in and zoom out to the object uh, when you right click the mouse button like you can see the right click button it gives you an orbit shape so this is how i'm just rotating my viewport screen okay it's like it's it allows you to orbit okay and zoom in and zoom out so let's go into the gumball okay i'm just selecting this i'm just turning on the gumball so you can see a tricolor like three different arrows it's represent the or i uh, mean that different axis like x y z okay different axis you can see green red and blue blue is like z axis like the height uh, green and red is the length uh, to be something so so when i use this arrow you can see i can move the element which is being selected or the object which is being selected in the axis which i am clicking the arrow like the arrow you can move uh, if i use this arrow it moves in this axis that is y axis so it's up to you so it is movable yeah but it's just a random move or it's like what i you know, what if i need to do an exact move you just click on the arrow so it gives you uh, another input value box so you can put, it can give you a value so four meter something so if i click on this and it's a four meter it moves four meter so it is a great great tool to use uh for now uh it's like maybe it will be weird to see this but this gumball is so helpful i'll just show you where to use it and now you can see this is a small ball you can see a small ball so it just when i drag this ball it gives you an extrusion option so it just uh, extrude a line that is it just gives you an extrusion it just may yeah, i'm just extruding the line into surface using the gumball i mean pressing the ball so let's wait i'll just i just use i just click the ball of the red uh, red arrow so there's a lot of options okay so uh you can see there is a rotate option so it allows you to rotate in different axes so and then restoring the number so when i select so these gives you a rotate option and you can see there is a small square in each uh, uh or like each arrow's opposite side when i select this it allows you to scale in that uh, in that axis so you can so it allows me to scale in that axis and usually control z is the undo command yeah uh, like every software so i'm just using the escape button so to unselect it okay so this is the major gumball usage so i just select it and i'm just selecting it so this is like this so let's go into definition part like uh in the rhino there is certain terminology certain stuff you need to remember properly which has a input value in grasshopper also like grasshopper is the it's a canvas for rhino okay like you you uh, uh, grasshopper allows you to do a uh, scriptural work i mean a scripted work of what rhino elements is doing so just a scripted work so you need to have, uh, have like this terminology in your mind and know a proper meaning or a clear meaning of this so that when you do a model you can be so helpful in rhino or grasshopper this terminology will be so helpful and this you need to differentiate this and if you know to differentiate the option which i am saying then you will uh, you will like uh, you will avoid a lot of errors so the first thing is like this is said to be point okay so what i did is i just selected this is asking for location of point object i just give a location so that's simple so 
point like I don't most probably don't use in uh, Rhino but this point is so helpful in class okay so as like we used to we used to use a lot this point option is class of as vector form as well as a construction point so like, oh, if you don't know the difference definitely wait for it I'll just show you I'll just post a video of class of also after like uh, four or five videos in Rhino if I uh, post a video in class of it will be so like it will be understanding I always prefer to you learn the rhino part first then go for the grasshopper that's just a small suggestion in my experience okay nothing personal so i just delete this point so this is like a point so now let's go into curve so i just click uh, this option and you you will be asking bro you're just doing something and we don't know it's like i'm just showing uh this to know the meaning the command is not this. like i'll uh, I'll tell you the command properly after you know the meaning. Okay, so I just draw some lines. So and I just take this. So uh, you can see like what are the similarities between these two? Like these two are like fine. Uh, these two are lines. It's kind of a continuous line. Sometimes we used to call it as polygon. Okay, so I can see it's lines. Okay. And, and what is the difference between these two? Most of them are like you usually say this is a curved line and this is a straight line or something. But in Rhino, the basic thing is like if I select this, you can see one open curve is being selected. And if I select this one open curve is selected. According to Rhino, if it's a line is straight or it's curved, it uh, both comes under the category called curve. So whatever 2D wireframe, 2D structure, we, uh, it is comes under a category called curves. Okay, this is also a curve. This is also a curve according to Rhino. It's like generally we used to call when it's like it's not a straight line. We used to call it as a curve, but here yeah, that's not the concept. Okay, and when I select this, okay, curve, we got the like we I just explain the definition, but what is this open like uh, it shows open it shows open it shows closed okay you could easily identify that the lines are not open this is like a closed shape so it shows closed yeah it's obvious but where is going to help like what what is the necessity to know the option closed or open or where is the where this option is going to help us like this option is going to help you when you do an extrusion uh, of your uh, of your curve. So, like when it's closed, like uh, just may, just for example, I'll just do an extrude curve. So, when I extrude this, you can see it's it's a solid extrusion. Okay, you can see it's a solid extrusion. When I extrude this, you can see it's not solid because the curve is not closed; it's open. So yeah, it's it is easily visible, but uh, when you do a complex model at that time, you can't see or like uh, at that time you can't zoom in and zoom out whether it's closed or not. So when you select the curve in the command prompt, it it will be easily clear. It it, it will be easily visible whether it's open or closed. So if it's open, you just need to look where we, where the gap is being open, so you can close it and make it in a proper solid extrusion. So at that point it will be so helpful. So this is the concept. When a curve is closed, then when you extrude it, you will get a proper solid. When it's not, then you get a you get a poly surface, not a solid. So this is like it gives you an open extrusion. It's been extruded, but it comes under open extrusion. Okay. So this is curves. So in curves what are the options we have uh, let's go so these are the curves okay so in curves you can see single line polyline line from midpoint uh, normal to surface vertical to c plane line from four points line bisector line angle so yeah a lot of options that's great so but two major option is line okay so this is a single input like I just give two points and there is a line drawing so like wait I'll just select line it's asking for start of the line I click it and it's asking for the end of the line so the line is wrong so I can take the command from here I can use line 
type it and press enter it's asked the same so this is an one input value okay so this is polyline polyline is a multiple input value you can see i give multiple input so when i select it you can see it's a open curve but it's a polyline so you can see uh, within a selection all the uh, segments like one two three four five, it's kind of a uh, eight lines joined together so uh, it is a one single line but we use, uh, like it's a polyline where there is multiple input okay so so let's go into the line again so when it's single input you can see star line but when you see there is a lot of options over here so in single line, line when i give both sides i just click it you can see the line has been drawn from the point which i get on the both sides you can see it's been drawn on the both sides so this is the option this is a normal line but when i give the option both line this is the difference between both and thing and angular line so it's asking for the start and the end of the baseline now it's asking for the angle i just give 45 so the line has been drawn so what i did is like i just give the baseline like this so this is the baseline sorry i just use angle option so it's asking for the baseline from this baseline i want a 45 degree tilt so you can see from the baseline this is a 45 degree tilt and now it's asking for the end of the line maybe you can give the uh, second point over here or you can type the value like 40 meters and press enter you can see a 45 degree angle tilted a line it's been created with a distance of 40 so this is how you create a line uh, and this is called vertical option so this option will be so helpful okay so vertical is like when i select it so it automatically draw the line in the uh, z axis so uh, i just give vertical line so i can ping wherever i want but it automatically draws in z axis you can keep wherever you want but it automatically drawn here so this is a great option you know uh, when i do a 3d you might know okay and these are the options I just give these options for you on your hand. You just explore it. If you don't get, uh, like if you don't know, or if you don't get understand this option when you explore by yourself, just type it in the comment section. I'll just post the content on the next video. So it's kind of just, like just think it as a homework. So it makes you, uh, like it gives you some kind of interest so that you explore certain commands. So it's the same way. Just uh, type it and it's stays just try to read the command prompt just follow the command prompt so the line has been drawn so next is the curve line okay so i just use this is control point curve okay so When I select this point, you can see one curve point added to selection. Okay. If I select this point, one point added to selection. So what is the difference between the curve point and the point? So point is a generally a point. Okay, it doesn't have any uh kind of it's just an it's just a point. So control point is a point which you give an input. So when I select this point and if I drag, it uh it alters the curve like this. So so when i click this you can see the control point the shortcut for the shortcut for this is like f10 and f11 so f10 is a shortcut for showing control points and f11 is a shortcut for uh, show off the control points okay so the control points allows you to adjust the curve so this is an alpha thing so you can adjust it so when i draw a line just show it you can see these two lines so i just give two points so in this i just use the yes and when i drag this you can see so every this curve is been uh is been drawn between these two points and these two points are being identified or defined by us in the command prompt it will, uh, it will show the start point and the end point that is defined by us 
so then also after you defining also you can change the point position according to yourself the line is also been changing according to that so it's a great thing you know like the control points allows you to redefine your value so in this i'm going i'm just going to teach the basics too that is interpolate points and curve point from curve i mean control point from curve okay so so it's asking for start of the curve i'm just giving uh the start of the curve i'm just giving like point the curve is created with the reference to the point and this is interpolate curve so the different view you see is like the point is being out outside the curve and here the point is on like when i create the point the curves are being is been created on the points i'll just show you again so one point is being clicked you can see the when i click the second point the curve here is been moved from this point when i click the third point the curve is been moved from the point so it's been it's like um it's like a curve which is been drawn in a polygon or something so it goes you can see it's been uh, inside the point inside the control point uh, whereas here yeah, when i click the point when i click the second point also the curve uh, passes through the control point not it doesn't go anywhere so it depends on the situation where which one you want so uh this is one of the curve okay i just delete this and the next one is circle so you might ask bro what's up with this point so i just teach you one by one so i just now i'm just teaching you the basic story and the next one is circle so it's asking for the center of the circle i just give this as the center of the circle and now it's asking for the radius though instead of radius you can change it to diameter so maybe i can give the value by typing or else i just click the second point by just clicking on the screen so the circle is being created so when i go into this there is lot of options so vertical as i said uh there will be there will be uh, always an option called vertical in all the commands major commands like 2d and 3d basic commands you always have it so you can see the circle is like given so this is a great option you know like when you click on the vertical it obviously it will be uh, it will be drawn in the z axis with the reference to the z axis this is a great command which i always great option it's always uh like these are the commands which always make rhino uh, a little bit apart from other softwares it they gives proper command options for 3 uh, 3d basics and uh, next is ellipse okay so it's asking for the ellipse center and the first axis so this is the second axis so so these are the things so it have it also has the vertical option so i can see so these are the options just try to explore the rectangle and polygon by yourself but in your uh like just try it because in the future future video while doing modeling i'll just always i'll teach you the other commands okay so i'm just trying to teach uh, in this i'm just trying to say the 2d interface of the rhino so i'm just deleting this now let's go into the 3d so as i said before uh 2D and 3D. If you want to convert it 2D, like if you want to select this and if you want to convert it, you can extrude it. So uh, as I said before, if it's a open curve, you don't extrude uh, or you don't use the extrude option in a solid. Uh, like the um, it will be like it won't be a solid. Okay. So when I select this, this is closed. So in this, you can see the solid option. If I give no. If it's closed curve also, by default it will be no. Okay, so if it's a closed curve also, but it doesn't gives you, it gives you a poly like open extrusion. This doesn't come under closed extrusion. So when I select this and give solid S, you can see it comes under closed extrusion here. Like uh, if uh, like here we don't have the value and uh, I mean the 
uh, name called solid we used to call if, uh, if all the sites are being closed and it's called as closed ex exclusion if i just delete one thing and here uh, you can see i just deleted one part but here the, then there's like here you can see it doesn't been called as open exclusion then it changes to poly surface so poly surface comes under trim so whereas uh, the same thing if I do by this so here you can see the exclusion so the exclusion is a proper terminology where we didn't do any editing we just created a uh, wireframe to a surface by that way but when it comes to poly surface, poly surface is a surface which we edited after creating the 3D. So there's two different. Okay. So I just repeat it again. So when uh, you doesn't change any uh, uh, thing, you just change everything in the wireframe and you just extrude it, uh, it and you don't change anything in the surface, then it comes under open extrusion. But after you've done the extrusion and if you edited or if you deleted any surface, then it comes under poly surface. Okay. So I just need to show you another thing when it comes to surface. So I just create a surface and here maybe uh I'm just editing this. So when I select this, you can see one open surface is being created. This is also one open surface is being selected. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, we can do extrusion in the gumball. I'm just selecting the surface and just clicking the ball. So you can see one closed poly surface is being created. When I select this, you can see one. So this surface is said to be trimmed, uh, sorry, this surface is said to be untrimmed surface, okay? And this surface is said to be trimmed surface. So because uh, in this surface, I just created using the proper command. Here, I just use the same surface, but I just trimmed, I just manually edited certain things, I just trimmed it. So what is the major difference in Rhino? It doesn't affect you that much, but when you go to into the grasshopper, you just always remember this terminology called trimmed and untrimmed so trimmed is a surface which we are creating directly from the rhino command but untrimmed is like you create a surface and you just do some uh, correction and that's said to be untrimmed so here both comes under the same category like open surface but in grasshopper it has a different category that's why i just need to show you what is a trim and untrimmed surface so that at that time you don't get confused okay so here as I said, that like, uh, when you create a 3D, it is open and close. You have these two options. So um, that's a major thing. And like, um, so the 3D, uh, you can create a 3D by uh, from the wireframe that is from 2D to 3D, or else you can create a tag 3D from here. There's like a lot of 3D options. So it has a six surface, and there are some uh, optional case where you create a 3D. So here the 3D is being created just using one surface. So these are like special case. So here, like here it has a multi-surface, but this is like just a single surface. So these are the two surf, uh, types of uh, 3Ds, like single surface and multi-surface that is comes in a special case. And closed extrusion, open extrusion, I think so you got it. Maybe if you don't, if you don't understand, no worries, like when we started to do the model, the examples which I show, uh, which I try to do it, you will get a clear understanding in that. Okay, so for now, uh, for in this video, we just saw we just try to recollect what we saw. In this video, what we saw is like we just saw the bottom options and we saw the gumball option. So, what a gumball can do a gumball can scale, a gumball can rotate, and a gumball can extrude. And next, what we did is like uh, what we saw is like the point and lines. So in lines, we saw uh, every uh, the curve, the name called curve. So if it's a straight line or if it's a curve line, if anything, if, it, uh, if it's a 2D wireframe, then it's called to be curve. 
and in curve we have two options that is open and close so if it's open uh, uh, like when you do an extrusion it won't be a solid when it's closed it will be a solid and in surface we just saw trimmed and untrimmed and in solid we just saw open extrusion closed extrusion and poly surface so these are the topics which we saw in this video so if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section so thank you for watching the video as i said before every friday on the timing of 5 to 7 we will post a video on rhino grasshopper which comes under parametric software series i hope it helps you helps for you and if it doesn't help yeah and if you think uh, this video will be helpful for your friends or like your colleagues please share to them so that they also learn something and if you have anything just let me know in the comment section tata bye bye have a nice day see you on the next video on the friday Bye.